How's it going, Pace Linux users, viewers, whatever you are? You can't be a user unless you're using my blog. Anyway, uh, it's been a while, I know. Um, still using Linux, obviously, and you can see right here I'm in the terminal, and I am on my dad's computer because my computer died, unfortunately. Anyway, I just got uh, done with an interview for an internship where I'm going to be programming and teaching uh, students how to program. Um, it's going to be interesting, and because of this, I want to start a new series on my channel about Perl, so I can get you know teaching practice done because I haven't been doing it lately, and I just want to get my skills back. And um, so by doing this, I'm going to be teaching you guys Perl. Uh, so what exactly is Perl? Uh, Perl is a practical extraction and report language. Um, it was created by Larry Wall in the 1980s, um, mid 1980s, uh, he was working on a project which required him to do some computing that the tools that he had at the moment were not up to standards on what he wanted to do. So he decided that he was going to create what he needed to do through Perl, and um, that's how we got it. Um, a big question is: Is Perl easy or hard to learn? Perl is a lot like uh, Python, in my opinion. Uh, it's really, really easy. I mean, I got I came from a Perl background, so I mean a Python background. So as soon as I switched to Perl to try and learn it, it was like a snap. I didn't have an issue at all. Uh, let's see, what else should we talk about? Uh, what is Perl good for? Uh, Perl is good for practically anything. Uh, as you'll learn through programming, that different tasks require different languages. So the more you program, and the more languages you outreach or reach out to. Um, you'll find that those will fit your needs better. But Perl is good for servers, uh, web development. Uh, it's pretty much ported onto practically anything. You could probably find a port on any distro, smartphone possibly. Uh, I would have to look into that smartphone. But I mean, it's been ported pretty, um, pretty much onto a lot of different computers. So you don't have to worry about portability. It's always there for you. Uh, no matter what operating system as well for basic computing, Mac, Windows, you get the idea. Um, what's Perl not good for? Probably not big scale projects. Uh, something like, I don't know, building your next Photoshop. I do not know if Perl has its own GUI at the moment, um, extension that somebody's built, but I probably wouldn't suggest using Perl if you're going to start doing a big, large production application. Perl is pretty good for you know your scripting, getting something done in a couple of minutes, um, something that won't take long, you know, to program. Hence why it's a scripting language. Perl is available, uh, like I said, on every, every distro uh, operating system as well. So to get Perl for your computer, you're going to have to look it up, but for Linux, it's most likely already installed, but if you haven't have it installed, to wrap it, install Perl will automatically get you Perl. I'm up to date, so I don't have to worry about it. Perl has this cool thing called CPAN, C-P-A-N, um, which is Comprehensive Perl Archive Network, and most likely you probably haven't heard of it unless you've worked with Perl, and what it does, it has an archive of just about anything you need to know about Perl. It's got a lot of source up there. It's a website. Uh, the website is cpan, cpan .org. Uh It's got a whole sorts of non-Unix, Unix examples, documentations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I would just look into that if you're the type of person that needs, you know, to look at source to learn a language, or if you just want to, you know, learn something. You can. It has a search bar. You type in whatever you want to search, what you're trying to look up, and it's there probably. Most likely. Uh, so what shall we do? What shall we do today? Let's just do the traditional sample program, Hello World. One thing I would like to talk about in Perl, Perl does not have its own extension. So if you see here, uh, we're going to do Hello World. Dot. The extension doesn't have one. You can use PRL. I mean, that sort of is a standard but Perl doesn't need an extension, so I could technically just do this, hello world, or I can do hello mg5, it doesn't even matter. 
Um, but before I get into the Hello World, I'm using Vim as my editor. You can use whatever you're using. Uh, you don't have to use the terminal. Just open up your editing software, and we'll get from there. So I'm just going to name it. That's going to be my file extension, just to prove that you know it doesn't need anything. How Perl gets away with this is by doing this. Let's see, user slash bin slash Perl. And what that is is that tells you or the computer, excuse me, that this is a Perl uh, executable and because I am using the terminal, we will do, excuse me, chmod plus x, which means executable, hello, and I did have completion on that. So it automatically tells me that it's Perl, um, because it shows it right here. Now in Perl, just like in Python, we do print quotations, hello world. Let's put a and you have to end it with this uh, semicolon because that tells it that the line is done, no more execution on this line, then we can go to the next line. Now, watch what's going to happen whenever we do this, whenever we run this um, script. I'm first I'm going to show you that you can run it through Perl, and it works. You see what happened there? Or I can just do this, um, and it does it again. So, you see what happened? It didn't print any lines. So in Perl, unlike in Python, you have to put this, which stands for new line, inside your quotations. And if we run it again, it gives us a uh, um, hello world and then a new line, which is great. Now, I do want to show you this. If I take away the semicolon and I run this, it works, correct? So if I go here again and add an, uh, another line to print, watch this, we shall get an error because it doesn't complete the line. It gets confused. Now if we do this, we can do both. And I forgot to put the new line at the end of this, so that's why that showed up. Alright, so you see there, that's the introduction to Perl. Now straight after I upload this video, I'm going to upload another one. I just want to give people, you know, the history of Perl of their first application, you know, the hello world, because that's what everybody learns from first. And then we're going to go into more advanced stuff. We'll go into variables next, then arrays most likely, uh, arrays and lists, and I'll see what else I can start up for everybody. So I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, this is Pace Linux. My name is John Reservato. Uh, if you would like to visit my site, it's pacelinux.com. Um, that's run through WordPress. I will post, let's see, I'll post the source of upcoming uh, videos on my website and I'll link it through the description on YouTube. So you, just in case you want to, you know, look straight at the source and not go through the video, I will have that. Thank you for sticking with me and I hope everybody has a great day.